Mwele Masia Kaha, and I'm a vet third year med student, right? And technically, what this video is about, Cellular Ego just pretty much asked me just to make this brief video, which is gonna be about my life, a brief touch of my life, and how I got into med school, how I'm finding med school, and yeah, it's gonna be a pretty brief video. And so, before I start, right, I just wanna quickly lay it out there that for the past three takes of this video, I've literally been saying, Hi, my name is Gloria Masiakaha and I'm a vet med school. I don't know why. I really don't know why. But yeah, I've been saying that, so I'm pretty glad I got that right on the fourth take. So anyway, um, like I said before, um, my name is Masia Masiakaha, vet med student, and yeah. So um, I technically was raised in Pretoria. I was born in Eastern Cape, in Tata. But then I was simply raised in Pretoria. It's where I spent my whole life, practically. It's also where I went to high school. I went to high school in a school called um, Littleton Manor High School. The school is found in Centurion. So it's pretty, it's quite a distance from my place, but it was like a 15 minute drive from my home. So that's simply where I went to high school. It was a pretty decent school, you know? It was a pretty decent school. There was nothing fancy about it. It was a, it was a decent school, you know? <laughs> it was a pretty decent school with a huge, the huge variety of students from all classes, from all classes and from all races too, you know. And I'd like to say um, that's simply where I've always wanted to get into med school, practically, you know. I've always wanted to get into med school. I've always wanted to pursue the career of the medical field career, specifically being a doctor my whole high school. But I guess when I got to high school, it's where I realized just how much I wanted this, specifically when I started taking life science. I know. I just wanna put this like a disclaimer again. Life science is completely different from what medicine technically is. But I won't lie, it does give you a touch of what it could be like. So it does give you a touch of what med school could be like. Slight touch. But, and, so I guess if you enjoy life science, you pretty much most likely going to enjoy um, med school too, you know? Again, it's not, life science is nothing like med school, but it gives you a feeling of, you know, and that's simply where my 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 feel to get into the medical field kind of kind of increased, you know. I realized just how much I really wanted to do to get into med school and get into the whole medical field career. So again, I did the subjects that I did in high school is that I did I did life science, I did maths, I did physics, and I did accounting. Right. So I took accounting as an alternative if I don't make it into med school. So accounting was an alternative, and yeah. So what I did is that I remember I applied to every varsity because then I uh, I doubted my capabilities. But then it was justified because I personally did not know anyone who actually got into med school, you know. And it was kind of scary because then it made me realize that hey man, maybe it's because you don't get into med school, as in like people that you know, or the people in your environment just don't get into med school. That's just how hard it was, you know. So in my whole my whole high school career I had I was convinced of that, which is why when I got to matric, I literally applied to every varsity, you know. I applied to Stellenbosch, I applied to UCT, I applied to VIT, I applied to DAX, you know. And but for DAX I applied for something different. I applied for genetics because I had like sponsorship to go to DAX to study specifically genetics, you know. But I yeah, I eventually chose the path that I'm in now, you know. So um like I said, I got I took I mentioned the subjects that I took, and as mentioned, I, I applied in every varsity, like I said, because I was just really genuinely scared, I'm not gonna lie, you know. So, and then came matric year, I'm already talking about matric year, but yeah, so what I did is that I I went for the NBT, I applied, applied in every varsity, after applying in every varsity, I went for the NBT. MBT was pretty tricky because, to be honest, there's really not much you can do to prepare for it, you know. I like to think MBT actually genuinely does test your IQ and your level of thinking, you know. So what you should do going into MBT is just, just try making sure that everything you know, you properly know it, you know. Because there isn't really much preparation you can do for MBT. So that's what I did. What I did is that um, before I went to my MBT, I made sure that everything I've done in school, I just went over it again, and I made sure that I, I made sure that I 100% understood um, this. And there's there's also some NBT practice tests that I spent a lot of time on, you know. So I just obviously um, every day or whenever I had the chance to, I'd go over this like a few weeks before going into my NBT test, you know. I'm not gonna lie, NBT test is very tricky. It's extremely tricky. It's tough. It's straight up hard, but 
it's possible to actually make it out of it because then what i did is that i specifically forgot what it was but my average for both two tests my literacy my english literature test and my english and, and the maths test my average was like 74 75 for both of them so i guess it was enough to get me into med school because then i did end up getting into med school but before i get to that i want to just talk about my metric results so how my metric results was that i took seven subjects but i got six distinctions and the one that i missed was so close it was a strong b but anyway we move we accept our past and we move so um that happened and i i did i got six distinctions and my average for metric was like 88 my average for metric was 88 and that kind of scared me because like i said i didn't know anyone who got into med school so i didn't know what they actually require i'm like yeah they do have they do have the blueprint of what you need to have but I'm like if you know people who actually got those minimum the minimums that they mentioned but then they still didn't get it made you realize that the minimums that they mentioned there which is like 60 percent for maths 60 for physics just made you realize that that's actually not true you know obviously they're looking for something higher than that you know so i was scared and pretty pretty pumped but i was still hopeful i was genuinely still hopeful to a point where i after my, my metric results and my nbt marks I got I got accepted into every varsity that I applied for. So I got accepted for medicine. Um, I got accepted for medicine in UCT, Stellenbosch, Vert, and but I explained the UP situation where I didn't apply for medicine. I applied for something else, but I still got in for that. You know. So yeah, I was pretty pumped. It was really one of the happiest days. I'm not gonna lie, you know, because then you you know how hard it is to get into it. So when you actually finally do it, it really means a lot to you. It meant a lot to me it was a really good sense of accomplishment you know so what i did is that i got into med school i uh, got into med school and first year first year was pretty rough i'm not gonna lie cousin you just got to a new environment i mean like your whole life you've been living at home with your family with your parents well specifically in my situation that was the case and then i come and i finally move away from home and then i have to start over you know i have to find new friends i have to find I have to find new hobbies, not necessarily new hobbies, but I have to find what I enjoy doing in varsity. And I had to find what I'm going to find comfortable, what I'm going to be comfortable with doing in varsity and something that's going to actually be able to support my academic career, you know. Because one thing you should never forget when you get to varsity is you should never forget what you came here for. It's obviously to graduate eventually, you know. So whatever you end up doing in varsity, whatever hobbies you pick up, whatever whatever activity you start enjoying and doing, you gotta always remember what you came here for. And it's something I really feel like is important, you know, cause then, yeah, that does determine how you're gonna do academically. And that's what I, eventually I did get the hang of varsity as in like, I knew what's for me and what's not for me, you know? And I feel like it's an adventure that everyone should actually go through until you eventually find what's for you. So eventually I found midway of, through varsity to first year, I mean, I found what I'm about technically, you know? I found what I enjoy doing, I found what, would actually help me always push myself academically, you know. So first year was pretty much a breeze, I'm not gonna lie. First year, first year was pretty much a breeze. That's also because specifically the content that we do in first year is not related to medicine at all. I really don't know what's wrong with it. I really don't know what's wrong with it. The content we were doing in first year was completely not related to the medical degree. We were doing things like chemistry, physics, you know. I really felt like it was me and multiple other people really feel like it was not anything that got you it, I mean, it got you prepared for med school but then it wasn't any reflection of what med school really is about you know so i got through first year um it was pretty easy wow flex but it was pretty decent i got out i got out with like four distinction three distinctions i mean sorry they just on my wall that's why i keep looking there i got out with like three distinctions and then i got to second year right Second year, of course, was a pre-med school. It, got, it gave you a strong feel of what med school was about. We did specifically anatomy, more med, and physiology, right? They were, they were tricky. They were tricky. They really needed a lot of dedication. Like second year in general is pretty hard. So it needs a lot of dedication. It needs a lot of time, you know? So I got into second year, and that's exactly what I gave. I gave a lot of dedication. I gave a lot of, I gave a, I gave a lot of time, you know? And it pushed me to a point where it, it made the year pretty easy when I got towards the end. Because by the, by the time I got, by the end of the year, I'd already exempted, like, everything. And exemption is essentially whereby you don't write final exams, you know. So I got, I got myself to that comfortable position where I got, like, exempted for, exemption for everything. And I, 
I also got myself a distinction specifically for physio, for physiology, right? So second year is, I would say, what I've experienced so far was the hardest. It's the one that required a lot of attention, a lot of time, a lot of dedication, you know? And if you do give exactly that, you will end up coming out pretty much on top, you know? And I got to third year again, I'm still in third year, and how I'm finding um, third year so far is, it's pretty tricky again, but then it's very, gives me goosebumps. Like I wanna, it really gives me goosebumps because this is what our career is thinking about, you know? This is literally what medicine is thinking about and it gives you a sense of pride knowing that you're actually finally doing something that you've spent your whole life dreaming of doing, you know? It really gives you a lot of pride and a lot of sense of self, self, self accomplishment, you know? And yeah, and the advice, brief advice that I give to like the matrix is um, just keep the end goal in your head, you know? Just keep pushing. I know it might seem like things are not gonna end, especially with this lockdown and the coronavirus. I know things might seem like they're not gonna end, but they will, you know? Things are gonna get better and things are gonna, like if you work towards your goal, you are gonna eventually get to your goal. There's no other way around it. If you work towards it, it's definitely gonna come, you know? So I motivate you guys to keep stay strong, you know, just keep your head down and keep doing what needs to be done, and eventually you reach all your goals. It's pretty insane when you finally do. Our greatest glory is never in falling, but in rising every time we fall. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like these. Thank you to the new subscribers, very much appreciated.